Uh, okay. All right, let me give a brief introduction for, okay, so we're very happy to have uh, Francesco Giusotto visiting us for our IQS uh, seminar this week. Uh, so Francesco got his PhD in the Scuola Normale in Pisa, in Italy, in 2002, which is the same year I got my PhD, so we're exactly the same age, uh, academically speaking. Uh, he was a visiting scientist in Finland at Alto University with working with Yuko Pekola uh, 2003 to 2008. He was also visiting in Ponovla in the University of Joseph Fourier in 2011. Since 2020, he has been the research director there in Pisa uh, at the Institute of Nanoscience, the CNR at Pisa. It's a very nice facility. I visited him there. Uh, it's a great, uh, great place there in, uh, in Pisa. And Francesco is an expert in all things uh, superconductivity. He's really one of the world's leaders in uh, thermal transport, magnetotransport, and many electricity, thermal electricity, mesoscopic uh, superconductivity, all these things. He has more than 190 publications in uh, nine patents one of which is with me. So, so we have a patent together. We've, we've worked each other with each other for a while now. Francesco and I were sort of like the odd couple. He has his skull ring. I have my suit on, but we get along wonderfully and have a great time. We've already made new discoveries here. He's only been here a couple of days, so there's a lot more to go. Exactly. So today he's gonna to tell us about uh, uh, how to make a superconducting transistor. And you might say, how is that possible? If you have to gate this thing, how can you gate a superconductor? It seems impossible. Francesco has done the impossible. Tell us about it. <laughs> so, uh, hello everybody, everyone. And, and thanks to Andrew for this very nice introduction. So for me, it's very, really pleasure to be here. It's the first time here at Chapman University. It's a very nice place, very stimulating place. So uh, today we'll talk about this, uh, this issue of uh, thermal transport in, uh, in superconducting quantum circuits. Okay, so maybe something that you uh, are not really accustomed to, but I hope that I will uh, be able to transmit you some of the ideas and uh, the basis of this kind of uh, uh, physics. So today we'll talk about, uh, in particular, manipulating heat transport via proximity effect in, uh, in superconducting circuits. In particular, how to implement uh, the thermal version of the superconducting quantum interference procurement transistor. So, so what is uh, known as, uh, let's say, the, the squid, okay? So, um, okay, so let's start with the outline of the talk. I uh, will discuss uh, a little about the motivations and the mission of uh, thermal transport in the superconducting quantum circuits or mesoscopic circuits. I will introduce some proximity effect in hybrid systems. So how does it impact the density states of uh, a metal, for instance? So uh, in the sense to, to be able to realize a sort of synthetic artificial superconductor, okay? Then I will uh, introduce uh, the concept uh, of uh, um, the script. So the superconducting quantum field proximity transistor. So what is uh, its electric behavior and uh, uh, its counterpart, so the thermal behavior of the squid, because uh, thermally speaking, this is uh, really a, a thermal transistor, okay? It's a, it's a flux control thermal transistor. So I will show uh, the concept of this uh, thermal superconducting quantum interference proximal transistor, some details uh, uh, of the structure and details of the implementation. And uh, then I will go with the experimental results and the, the and comparison, okay, with the Okay, and in the very last part of the talk, I will introduce and show the, um, the very first implementation of a thermal memory cell. So uh, a cell, a memory cell that uses uh, two different states of temperature to encode logic states, okay. And uh, very interesting, notably, this kind of system here has an intrinsic topological protection, okay, because it is based on phase states during so I will uh, I will show this uh, this very intriguing uh, uh, experiment result. But then we will put with the with the perspective and, and conclusions. So uh, let's start with the motivation of the mission. So what is uh, the the idea of this uh, uh, coherent uh, color electronics? So uh, to put coherence basically in in heat transport. 
Okay. So this is uh, the idea is to set the experimental ground for a, a young, let's say, branch of science. So the query electronic, which is the complementary of the coherent electrons. Okay. So the main goal is to the phase manipulation and mastering of heat transfer in a fully solid state environment. Okay. And so to provide novel ways to uh, realize thermal devices. So from heat transistors, splitter, diodes, uh, refrigerators, uh, uh, and exotic quantum circuits that take advantage of this above uh, mentioned, let's say, building block to enhance their functionalities in the system. Last but not least, to address and understand some fundamental energy and uh, heat related properties in microscopic physics at the nanoscale. Okay, so coherent dynamics, heat interference, uh, time dependent effect, the concept of quantum thermodynamics. Uh, the problem of the coherence, noise, and so forth. So, so in a nutshell, the coherent electronics is, uh, uh, has a, as the main goal to develop the quantum technology for managing heat and energy in nanoscale. Okay, so this is it. Okay, so let's see which are some interesting goals of the coherent electronics. So first of all, we wish to realize it in, 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 in light of uh, energy efficient, let's say quantum computers or very efficient uh, cold electronics. What is important basically is the uh, realization of efficient uh, uh, low thermal valves and memories. I mean, so the idea is try to, to harvest whatever heat is generated in a circuit and to utilize this uh, uh, for other purposes, okay? So what is wasted that can be, uh, Utilize again in order to implement uh, memories, for instance, or other uh, interesting circuits like uh, heat amplifiers or other building blocks that use uh, what is waste uh, in the electronic counterpart. Okay, so uh, this can lead to several applications in electronics, thermal devices, for instance, thermal devices uh, sensing, no quantum sensing, so detectors for radiation. All these are thermographs, thermal electricity, and quantum technology in general. So far, I would say, uh, till uh, let's say two years ago, uh, when we talk about uh, um, heat uh, calorotronics in, in mesoscopic, uh, mainly the Joyson effect was exploited uh, in this sense. So we were using the uh, phase dependent part of the heat current uh, existing in thermally bio Joyson junction in order to manipulate the heat current uh, with the fluxes, okay? So with the phase, okay? But I mean, uh, the Joyson effect uh, is not the only possibility. So there is also the possibility beyond the Joyson effect to, uh, it would be nice, I mean, to control and to tailor the spectral properties of the metals, like the density of states and so forth, so on, controlling this with phase, and then uh, uh, to, uh, to play uh, with this density of state at will in order to implement a novel concept, let's say, uh, of devices for a, a very efficient heat current control in the system. Okay, so what is one, uh, uh, one, one of these very, very ideal candidates in this sense is the, the proximity effect, it's the Riverdale proximity effect. So thanks to the proximity effect, that, what is the proximity effect? Proximity effect is basically the intimate contact of a superconductor with a non-superconducting metal and the possibility to induce correlation, superconducting correlation into this uh, non-superconducting metal. So thanks to this uh, intimate contact then, the Proximitized metal will acquire itself some superconductive light properties, okay? Like uh, a, a mini gap, so a gap in density of states. Uh, and eventually, if we are sufficiently smart, we can we have a way to control the evolution of the density of states uh, at will in a very efficient way. So the proximity effect uh, uh, is uh, a very efficient basis, let's say, to tailor the electronic properties uh, of a metal. And uh, Thanks to the proximity effect, another way uh, is uh, to implement this phase manipulation of density of states inside the superconducting quantum interference proximity transistor. So, to obtain a very powerful way to master heat currents at the nanoscale. Okay? So, let's say what is the physical basis of uh, this phase current electronics. If you look at the top, uh, top panel, um, uh, cartoon, the idea is the following. So the idea is to exploit suitable uh, physical mechanism related to superconductivity, 
in particular the phase, so to exploit a macroscopic quantum phase existing uh, in the Cooper condensate in order to manipulate the heat current flowing between two or more reservoirs residing at different temperatures, so T hot and T cold, okay? So T hot and T cold, it thermodynamically are perfect gauges. And since we are dealing in a solid fluid solid state environment, these are uh, electrons, let's say. These electrons uh, reside in uh, normal metal, in semiconductors, uh, and in superconductors in general. So the physical and electronics so deals with uh, all the physical mechanisms that we can conceive in order to control the heat current flowing and exchange between different electronic reservoirs, residing at different temperature, by using as a way the superconducting phase as a mechanism to control all these kind of things. Toward this end, there are, in principle, three different ways that we have, uh, uh, let's say, chosen, that are the more experimentally viable, I would say. So the first one on the left is uh, to exploit the Joyson effect, I was saying. So here we exploit the thermally biased Joyson junction, in particular, the uh, phase uh, coherent part of the heat current appearing in thermally biased Joyson junction. So far, all the experiments that we have performed in terms of clinical electronics have been performed with the Joyce effect. Okay? Then there is the middle column, that is uh, this one. Here uh, we deal with uh, tuning of the electron photon interaction. Okay, so we tune the interaction of the electrons in the system with the environment, with the photonic environment. Okay, so thanks to this wireless, let's say, interaction of electrons. The photons, so we can control the heat exchange between these two reservoirs here, N and N. Okay, so the two reservoirs can, in principle, be non in, not in galvanic contact, they're completely separated, but they can interact thanks to the cavity modes of the photonic environment. So, if we couple them, for instance, with the superconducting quantum resonator, so we realize a circuit QED circuit, okay, suitable, we can use a squid, for instance, as a a flux tunable uh, impedance, variable impedance. And this changes so the photonic impedance between the two guys, left and right, and can control the amount of heat that is transferred between one and the other. So this is a very efficient way to control a wireless uh, and phase coherent transport of heat at a distance without any uh, galvanic contact. Then there is the very last one, that is the one that I'm going to uh, more deeply address today, it is the proximity effect. So as we we're saying, the proximity effect that is uh, related to the possibility to um, acquire superconducting uh, correlations, properties, from the intimate contact, the galvanic contact with the superconductor. So the, this proximitized metals basically is a sort of poor superconductor in some sense, so a weaker superconductor, but whose uh, uh, main electronic properties, like denser states and so forth, so on, they are completely changed by the superconducting proteins. Okay? And these uh, denser states, uh, or for instance, the electron phonon coupling, the, uh, the entropy and the thermal conductor, everything becomes phase dependent because uh, the, um, the proximitized metal uh, in inherits the uh, phase of the microscopic condensate coming from the other superconductors. Okay? So, in this sense, the proximity effect can be a very powerful way to create an Arctic synthetic superconductors completely fully tunable with the phase. With additional properties with respect to Joseph effect. Good. So, as we are saying, uh, in the first uh, scenario where we use Joyson tunnel circuits, the idea is, uh, was to use, you see here, a squid or an extended Joyson junction. Here on top, we have a squid where we have two, uh, two electrodes of the junction at different temperatures. And the second example is an extended Joyson junction with an in plane magnetic field. So the first one uh, behaves as a two, um, two slit interferometer, whether the second one is single slit interferometer, okay. And you see here on the right, I mean, uh, if we can contact this uh, um, phase coherent building block to a N1 and N2, two normal metal reservoirs residing in different temperatures, the heat current flowing in the system will be modulated by this phase dependent part of the, of the Heat current exists in thermally biased choice injection. Okay, so in the double slit interferometer, this will be just proportional to the absolute value of the cosine, and in a single slit diffractor, choice and diffractor will be just a, if the junction is rectangular, is the sine the sine cardinal. Okay, exactly the, the Fraunhofer pattern, and this will reflect immediately in the in the heat current as well. 
So this is amazing. So here you see in the first case where we had double slit spectrometer, we, we see that the temperature in the yellow electrode that is modulated as mod at the absolute value of the cosine. So this is the temperature. How is modulated the temperature? And the temperature is modulated because the heat current is modulated. And the same way, I mean, here below, we have a, in the single diffract, single slit diffractor, I mean, the, the temperature, so the heat current will be modulated accordingly to a chromophore factor, the cardinal side current, okay? Mm -hmm. Then, I mean, uh, in the proximity effect, it's like different. In the proximity effect, we, we, can, we can think uh, to have a, a, you know, a, a small wire or normal metal like this, uh, orange part here or S here that is connected inserted in a ring. So the ring allows from left and right to induce superconducting correlation that extend inside the normal metal. And thanks to the loop shape, we can impose externally with the flux a well precise phase bias across the wire. And this will control completely the spectral density of this proximitized metal. So thanks to the flux, we can completely control the density of states of the metal, so that electrical conductance, or thermal conductance, the entropy, the specific heat, electron coupling, coupling, whatever you want. Francesco, but let me ask you, to, yeah. to, to make this behave this way, I guess your, your metal has to be smaller than the coherence length of the superconductor. Well, not necessarily, because the, I mean, it, it can be of, I mean, if it is a comparable or smaller, the effect is uh, very large. If, it's, if, it is a, if it's slang, let's say, it's a few coherent slang, of course, the, the effect is weaker, but it's still present because so it is a, a very long range. So and what's the physical, when you make these things, how big it was the physical dimension of the normal metal? The more normal metal, typically, the length is of the order of uh, a sizable fraction of a micron, so a few hundreds of nanometers, typically. So it's a very tiny. Then I will show you the, the structures. And so thanks to this uh, uh, proximitized uh, uh, conditions, I mean, we can, as I was saying, we can control several pro several key properties of the system in terms uh, uh, of electrical uh, electrical and uh, thermal properties. For instance, uh, um, we, can, we can achieve phase-dependent control of the electron front coupling, entropy-specific heat, I was saying, and this can lead to the realization of a student proximity thermal bond. So, system where we can control, thanks to the flux, the amount, uh, of heat that is flowing from one part to the other part. So something that can be very interesting, okay? Okay, so, um, probably you know very well, I mean, uh, just a very quick introduction. So we are dealing with proximity effect and supercurrent in this metallic system. So in particular, we have in mind the metallic contact, normal in general, or a tiny superconductor sandwiched between a normal metal between a, two superconductors, okay? And in this system, I mean, the charge transport occurs thanks to the process of hydro reflection that is shown here on the right. It is a process for which an, inch, an instant electron from a normal metal or a semiconductor or whatever, uh, with energy smaller than the energy gap in a superconductor can condense the Cooper pair size superconductor at the same time a hole is retroreflected along the incoming electron time reverse path. Okay, in this case, this you can uh, is the mechanism that allows basically charge transport in the superconductor. But of course, this doesn't allow any heat transfer in the superconductor. Okay, because uh, a superconductor, in a, in a real case, a condensate of Cooper pairs is a is a fully bosonic state. So I mean, uh, heat cannot cannot transport. Only possible particle the superconductor can transport heat. So above here, below there is no way. So basically, this mechanism here allows perfect uh, uh, electrical conduction and the perfect uh, heat reflection in some sense. Okay, so this is why superconductors are called also on great mirrors because they speed back the, the heat that one has to want to inject them. So when we have uh, like in uh, in uh, in the left panel, bottom left panel such two of these uh, SN contacts together. And the, if the length of the normal metal is sufficient uh, short, so that it allows the overlapping of the left and wire and right uh, with function of the superconductors, a, a sort of uh, what are, are called and very bound states can form inside the system. And these are responsible, for instance, for the dragging the supercar. It allows the propagation of uh, dissipation states from the left to right, okay? And this is a supercurrent, 
a real supercurrent with uh, all the properties of the supercurrent, like uh, in SAS Joyce injection. But uh, in addition to the supercurrent, I mean, this Andrea bond states will create also will alter the spectral properties of a metal, so the tensile states of the metal. So this is what I'm going uh, exactly to, to show to you. Okay. So I mean, uh, here we have a uh, many theories, I guess. So uh, I have really to fly down from this kind of things because you are very expert in this kind of things. But I mean, the basic formula that we use to treat the proximity effect in, uh, in diffusive system is by solving the, using the Ozell equation. These are quite classical formulas, okay? And uh, uh, so you see we have a SNS system. The length, uh, the key parameters are the length of normal metal. Typically, uh, we treat the system in a quasi one dimensional geometry where the elastic mean free path is much smaller than the length of the system that is smaller than the phase free diffusal length, okay? Uh, delta is the superconductive of the parameter, phi is the macroscopic phase of the other parameter. One important uh, energy scale is the Taurus energy that you probably know, HD over two pi uh, L square. So that is a typical correlation energy for a disorder coherent compactor, okay? So from this, we can use uh, this uh, Z equation, the basic diffusion equation, the system from which you can extract the local tensile state of the system. That is one very important problem. So we're not going to go in detail of this, but uh, the density of states, probably local density free properties basically are the following. So that density of states is an even function of the energy and possesses a mini gap for, for a specific range of energies. Okay, so forbidden uh, forbidden energy for the spark. Okay. So it's a, it resembles a sort of uh, uh, artificial superconductor, thanks to this uh, correlation used from the external superconductors. And this mini gap is something very interesting because it has a very notable property that uh, the amplitude of the mini gap can be controlled thanks to the phase. So we can open or close the mini gap. Okay, when the phase is across the wire is zero, the mini gap is maximized. When it's pi, I mean, the mini gap is closer. So the system becomes gapless, it's dark, okay? And so thanks to this, we can construct uh, what uh, I'm going to show you. So first of all, let's see what is uh, what to expect in this proximity effect. Here on the left, we have the length of position dependence of the density states versus the energy. And we see then, for instance, uh, in the top panel, we, we change the length of the junction. So we go from uh, when the junction is very short, L much smaller than Xi, we have like a BCS-like behavior. That is the continuous line. When the junction is long, we decrease, you know, because the system becomes weaker. So we decrease the density of state, so we have a small mini gap. In the, in the bottom panel, still on the left, we see how does it behave, the density of state is a function of position. So what is interesting to remind that the position, the, posi the, the density of state is position dependent. Okay, but the mini gap is position independent. Okay, so when we move along uh, along the wire, uh, I mean the mini gap will be always the same, but then the detailed shape of the density tape, so the spectrum density will change point by point. Okay, on the right we have uh, the very mark, uh, very relevant, uh, uh, very relevant properties of the phase dependent of density states. So here we choose some length, and we see how it does evolve with the phase. Okay. And you, you see how it does evolve. So for the phase that is equal to zero, we see the black curve, we have a maximum mini gap, which is stable in the structure. And then at pi, gradually and continuously, we close the mini gap. And then it's completely reversible. So if we, if we continue to increase again the phase, we will reopen completely the mini gap in the system. Francesco, what is R there? R is, uh, is basically the uh, <laughs> parameter that uh, quantifies the, the transmissivity of the phase between a normal metal So R equal to zero is very transparent. This is in the language of his level equation, the Kupriano Lukic of uh, boundary conditions, basically. Typically, when we make metal metal contact, they are very transparent. So R is very, is very near to zero. Yeah. Of course, uh, the larger R, the weaker the proximity effect. Because it's like, it's like uh, suppressing the other parameter continuity between M and S. But this is a very nice experiment performed in, in, uh, at the beginning of 2000 from the Sakli group, which uh, uh, was exactly showing, look, now there is an SDM. Ah, yes. But this is very relevant. <laughs> yes. So 
and they were showing you see this uh, aluminum silver SNS squid so loops al aluminum loops interrupted by uh, silver wires of different length and then probably with the STM along the wire to demonstrate exactly what I was showing you. So for instance, in the left, top left, we have a very short wire, 300 nanometers, and you see how it does it evolve the density states inside the wire. Now you see that the density state changes, but the mini gap is the same. The blue, red, and pink cures have the same mini gap. Then on the ring, there is the green one, it's the PCS one, it's much more pronounced, of course. Then by increasing the length of the wire, 900 nanometer, and 2.7 microns, you see that uh, it becomes weaker and weaker. So 500 nanometers, you make smaller density states, 900 nanometers, even smaller, and then in this other case, almost is absent, okay? There's just traces of a sort of pseudo so traces of pseudo What is very nice is that it shows that it's possible to, um, how they control with the phase, as we are saying. So with the phase, so they put their tip in the middle, and then they start, uh, it is a, a sequence uh, like a, a movie. You see the movie, all the frames are for different uh, values of the phase, so the flux curves in the interferometer. From top left, I mean zero is completely open, and then by increasing up to pi, you see that they close completely the density states. And then in a fully reversible way, when they continue clockwise to increase this, they reopen completely the system. So it's, a, it's something that is magic. So it's a way to completely control in a phase current potential the uh, spectral properties of the method. And here on the right uh, is the comparison theory with the quasi-classical theory. So the experiment on the left part and right uh, on, on the theory. And you see that there is a very nice agreement. So this shows that the result equations in the quasi-classical form is a very efficient, uh, uh, let's say, technique to describe uh, Electronic and charge transport in in this mesoscopic supernova. Okay. Well, so now, uh, as I have shown you, this this uh, this is the basis. The, the I mean, the operation of this phase uh, manipulation of the density states of the superconductor of a normal, let's say, of a proximity wire is the basis for the realization of uh, a new kind of interferometer. Okay, that we we I invented this basically uh, twelve years ago. And uh, is, is the cousin of the squid. Is the cousin of the squid in the, in the following sense that you see we have here a ring that is interrupted by a normal, white, normal metal wire, the green one. And then we place a tunneling contact in the middle of the wire, more or less. So, what is the idea? With the idea is that with the, um, to active manipulate the density states of this proximity metal, thanks to the magnetic flux. Because with the magnetic flux, as I was saying, as I was showing to you, this imposes a, a phase difference across the wire, so we can phase control this uh, the density spectral response of the wire, and then the tunnel junction is used as a detector of this density of phase. Okay, to do tunnel spectroscopy, so we can current bias or voltage bias the system, and then look at the re corresponding response. If it is current bias, we look at the voltage response. If it is voltage bias, we look at the current response as a function of the flux. And this leads to a very, very high sensitivity for flux detection, extremely high. So is that is that is probably comparable? Is that it's probably better? Normally, is on par better than the best squid available about. So it's a very sensitive device, and it has very nice properties in the sense of very low dissipation because it has a, a very opaque tunnel barrier here. So it's super useful when you need to. Uh, achieve an extremely tiny mini dissipation in the system. Whereas a squid typically has a lot of dissipation because uh, uh, the squids, they use uh, shunting junction, shunting resistors, which are typical of the other one out. So they dissipate a lot of current, okay? So in this sense, uh, it's, a, it's a very um, low dissipative system, okay? So this is the concept of the electric, uh, uh, electric squid. So this, this kind of interferometer, I mean, we have implemented in a, in a bunch of different ways. So here are just a few examples. The probe, so you see there is a normal a superconducting ring in blue here in the color. This is another setup, similar. And then in the middle, we have a small wire, very tiny wire, a few hundred nanometers, as Andrew was asking before. And the width is something like uh, below 100 nanometers. Okay, so it's a very small wire. In the middle of the wire is contacted this tunnel contact that probes the density states 
of this proximity method. Okay? The probe can be N, normal, or superconducting. And depends if it is normal superconducting. In this case here, the violet one is superconducting. You can, it's like if you have a slightly different response between the two systems. Okay? In particular, if the normal, if the probe is normal, like here on the left, I mean, uh, if you concentrate just on the top panels, on the panels we have the experimental and theoretical uh, current voltage characteristic of this tunnel, probably the function of flux. So you see that the system interpolates between uh, an NIS-like system when we open the gap, so the wire S, and is contacted to this N probe. So when we have uh, the developed uh, tensor states, we have all these uh, NIS-like, and then at pi we close completely, so we have a fully an almost linear behavior. So this is an NIE injection, okay? And this reflects in the differential conductor of the system. So when it is gapped, is NIS-like, and then when it is closed, it's almost linear. But still, I mean, to preserve some correlation of the superconductor. When the system is, uh, when the junction is superconducting, instead the tunnel junction is superconducting, is like SIS or, or SIN, okay? So the system interpolates from SIS when the when the gap is fully open to SIN when the system is closed. In addition, when we have a superconducting probe, we have additional junction cutting between the proximity light wire and, and the tunnel probe. Okay, so there are some other characteristics. But this is just to show you uh, what is the idea. Okay, so electrically. Uh, so maybe I ask a question before you go into the thermal yeah, behavior. Yeah. So when, you, when you're tuning to the point of maximum uh, flux sensitivity, I go back. Do, do you go to the, the place where the gap is closed? Is it, are you measuring around there? Is that where your most sensitive point is? Well, typically, one, one very sensitive point is this one. Yeah, yeah. You put here, and you, you for instance, you voltage bias here, and then you see you have a very large current swing, for instance. Yeah. This is the idea. Or uh, similarly, you can use a current bias, so you, you stay here very low in current, and then you exploit the voltage swing that you obtain jumping from this curve to this curve here. So this is why, I mean, this, this can be extremely sensitive in the system. And so this is if you have your S, your, your, your junction is superconductor. This is when it's superconductor. You cannot, you, you never close completely because, uh, it, I mean, there is always a superconducting probe. When it's normal, you close completely, you see. You can go to this case too. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, in the thermal case, is uh, um, is slightly different in the sense that we could think to thermally bias the ring at the probe. For instance, the probe can be normal metal superconducting, and uh, in the linear response regime in temperature. So when the temperature difference between the two reservoirs, so the the ring, let's say, at the probe is much smaller than the average temperature uh, of the two electrodes. We can, uh, we can easily write down and extract the thermal conductor of the system. Basically, it's the integral of the energy square times the density states times the uh, uh, hyperbolic second square of energy over 2k volts. Okay, so with this, uh, it's, it's a very convenient way to characterize the response of the system. In the case uh, um, of this uh, thermal behavior of the script, uh, it's easy to see uh, the, the difference between the normal probe and the superconducting probe. Okay, when we have a, here on the right, we have the top panels. So the thermal conductance versus, uh, versus temperature uh, for a normal energy superconducting probe. And for different values, the colors, uh, I mean, uh, just indicate different values of uh, the flux in the system, okay? And so you see that when, uh, when the, the system is fully proximitized, the thermal conductance is very well uh, suppressed, largely suppressed at low temperature. And then by increasing the temperature when we approach normal state, it goes down up to the normal state. So this is normalized to the normal state thermal conductors, okay? So there is a huge suppression of the thermal conductors, okay? And, the, and the, this suppression, of course, changes and can be controlled thanks to the flux. Because with the flux, we control the thermal conductors. And so, I mean, uh, we control the density state, we control the thermal conductors. So it's a, a very effective way to control the amount of heat that this guy is able to transfer. When the, when the probe is superconducting, the system acts even more as a flux suppression, of course, because there is an additional superconductor. So we start already from a general very low suppression when the system is, is gapped because there is, is a SIS, and then we suppress even more. But we can never reach, let's say, 
the full open channel like in a normal case. So for many, let's say, thermal problems, it is preferable to have a normal metal electrode because in a normal metal electrode, we can fully achieve the two states of high transmission of heat, low transmission of heat, okay? And then what we have to keep in mind is that this function, the thermal conductance is a phase dependent so function, but it's periodic in flux, of course. No, it's fully periodic. When we repeat for several flux, we, it becomes always, always uh, um, uh, periodic in uh, I know, okay? What is the impact of the length of this wire? I mean, as we are saying, the length of the wire plays an important role because a long wire means uh, a low proximity effect, so the system will be less robust with respect to suppression of the conductivity. Whereas when the system is uh, is short, there is a very intense proximity effect, so this will behave more as a real superconductor. Okay, so this is just a comparison of thermal conductor for different length of the wire. So from the experimental point of view, it's preferable to work with very sharp and tiny wires in order to maximize the superconducting correlation. So to achieve a very effective, let's say, uh, thermal conductor modulation in the system. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the object that we have in mind. So the object is this uh, thermal superconducting squid, a thermal transistor. So the this is the scheme. The scheme we have a superconducting loop interrupted by a short normal metal. Here on the bottom, there is an SEM scanning electron micro uh, photograph, micrograph of the, of the device. You see, I mean, how small is the wire? The wire is that this guy here. You see where I have the, the pointer is a very tiny wire made uh, in this case, a superconducting wire. So it's, it's not really normal metal, but it's a superconductor. So here we exploit proximity effect in a superconducting ion. And then it's contacted with a normal metal wire that is red, is here. And contacted with this normal metal wire, we have several thermometers and heaters, so superconducting tunnel junction. And these uh, heaters so are used to inject uh, uh, heat and to heat up the quasi particles inside the normal metal. Whereas the thermometers are still superconducting junctions that are used to monitor in real time and to extract the real electronic temperature in this wire here. And so the experiment is performed in the following way. So we heat up, we, we, got, we, we, we give some fixed power to the system and we see the evolution of the electronic temperature in this long red wire as a function of the flux because the flux will operate as a sluice you know, at the end of uh, of this contact, modulating the amount of heat that is uh, transferred between the wire and the rest of the system. So the idea is the following. The junction is a normal, will be an NIS system, okay? It will be NIN or NIS, okay? And uh, the operation principle is the following. So on the left, we have the density of states of the superconductor and the normal metal. When the system is fully open, this is just a calculation to show how powerful can be this way of transferring the heat in the system, okay? So when the, this is the power that we transfer for fixed temperature biases between these two guys here, so the ring, the proximity wire and the, and the red electrode, is a function of the mini gap existing in, uh, in, in the proximity wire. So you see that when, uh, for, for here we have a, a 0.01 uh, TC, temperature gradient between the two, okay? And we see that uh, the power that is transferred between uh, the hot and cold electrode, okay, between the wire and the, the yellow wire and the long electrode, let's say, can change by about four orders of magnitude when we reduce the mini gap by 85%. So by closing the mini gap by 85%, we change by four orders of magnitude the power, the heat power that we can transfer. So this uh, show how, how big and how effective can be this way of migrating heat in nanoscale systems. Okay, so this is the idea that we exploit in this kind of object here. Francesco, yes. if, I, if I look at the color coding, it looks yeah. like uh, the thermometer and the heater are, are also in ice system. Is it right? Thermometer and heaters are, are always uh, all blue. Yes, these are superconducting tunnel junctions. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because the thermometry can be performed only with the nice. superconducting thermometer. Oh, okay. Yes, you know quite well on this. Yes. And use the same technique to heat. So, so I, we go well above the gap. I mean, does it help experimentally to have the same platform 
and see how you can use the same simple contracting. Exactly right. Exactly. This is made. It's, it's a fairly complicated structure. This you see, you have different replicas. Every replica is a different angle of operation, and we have three different uh, the transparent contact between the uh, the ring and the wire, and the opaque contact between the wire and the reservoir. So tunnel injection. It's a very complicated because the monitor is all like tunnel injection. So it's three angle of operation. So. But exactly use the same idea in order to simplify. And the thermometry is just the usual thermal couple where you have basically you look at the thermally occupied electrons above the Fermi energy, create a current, and then yeah. you could induce uh, you induce temperature. Yes, yes. Yeah. So we typically is operated the uh, um, current biasing, a couple of, a couple of them, and then look in the voltage response as a function of the temperature because the voltage response is a very steep response at current bias. So yes, exactly. So you are monitoring the quasi particle occupation in that node. And is a semi-absolute thermometer in some sense. Sealed absolute thermometer. It is calibrated becomes absolute thermometer. Okay. Uh, what is interesting to show you is the following is that uh, I mean as I was saying First of all, the electric behavior of this uh, guy here. The electric behavior, I mean, we are talking about this tiny wire embedded in a, in a ring. So by looking at top left panel, the, we have basically two possible configurations in general. So when the wire is sharp, as we are showing, or very short, the current phase relation is basically a distorted sinusoidal okay? And this uh, has a single value function. When the wire becomes pretty long, a superconducting wire, in this case, as I was saying, the, the wire is aluminum, and the aluminum is, uh, is a superconductor. So we are making proximity effect within a superconductor, okay? When the wire is long, a two coherence length, let's say, larger than 3.5 coherence length, the current phase relation of the junction become very complicated, okay? It becomes stratic. And this occurs uh, thanks uh, to the nucleation of phase lift in the structure. So the two branches that we see, the upper and the bottom one, these are, uh, let's say, uh, two different uh, um, branches that uh, are obtained by making the, uh, the flux to evolve in one direction or the other direction of the system, okay? And this corresponds to basically two, two different uh, topological index and basically which is codified by the even or odd order of uh, the uh, the phase, let's say the macroscopic phase along the, along the, along the wire. Okay, and uh, these two states, the even odd, they are uh, they correspond to minima in uh, in the Johnson uh, in the Johnson uh, landscape potential landscape, where this uh, meta stable solution inside here basically to a settle point. Okay. So basically, what happens is when in the, in the current phase relation of, the, of this Johnson junction, you have you you go here, then you jump. And when you go back, you do this. Okay. So these two states here are completely topological separated because they are separated by the phase lead barrier existing in the system that separates that prevents jumping from one part to the other. In the system, is a very large phase barrier. So the order of zero point one electron volt is huge. So this says that these two states here are topologically protected in some sense, thanks to this uh, even odd parity of uh, phase lift occurring in, in our wires. So why in the first case for a short wire, if we impose the voltage, we can measure a continuous uh, current in the system by closing the mini gap, we increase uh, the conduct the current and then again, in the other case, this reflects exactly the behavior here. So the, the current will show jumps because exactly the current, the phase will jump in the same way. So we'll have this sort of butterfly, okay? And this is reflected basically by this uh, behavior here, this theoretical calculation that we did uh, years ago with Paul Lirton. And, and uh, indeed, when the junction is very long, you have a several solutions. In this case, you have three solutions, you have up to five solutions. So it can be very, like, uh, very complicated. So uh, we are now in this situation here. So in this situation where the system shows some hysteresis, indeed by looking at, at this is the current in the system versus flux for fixed voltage, we see that the, 
in the forward backward uh, direction of the flux, we obtain this very nice charm. So this just reflects how the density of state and, and, the, the, uh, and the current phase relation reacts basically to, to the flux. So, and uh, at the same time, the system here means that electrically we can modulate from here to here, basically modulate the density of states in the system. And in this, in the current voltage characteristics, this one show exactly that you can modulate by almost 50% thanks to the, the phase, the spectral density of the system. So this basically is saying that it's a, it's a good candidate to perform a nice thermal measure, okay? So how do we set up our- so maybe Before you go on, so that means you must have a region of negative differential resistance. So there's some instability in the system. So there what, is instability. what's the physical origin of the instability? Phase leaps. The occurrence of phase slips in the junction. So the phase slip makes the, the junction, the phase to, to slip of two pi, and this gives the, to this metastable state. Only this. And the phase slip is a quite complicated, I mean, effect that you know in, in mesoscopic physics. So in the cures, when you have a quasi 1D uh, superconductors, which are pretty long. So the phase uh, is, no, you know, is no more single valued along all the wire, but it has to these uh, three poles every time, okay? And this is exactly what is going on. So this is a phase lift junction. The phase lift junction can be used either to modulate the heat current or to implement a, a memory, as we showed, because uh, the hysteresis can be the basis for any memory. You know? Whenever you have an hysteresis, and you can implement a memory. And so this will be able to implement a memory. So how do we do experiment in general? As we were saying, we, we heat one part, we give some fixed power inside with thermometry. We monitor the temperature and with the flux, we control the density state of the small metal. So closing or opening the amount of heat that is going out from this guy here. So when the density state is open, phase zero, this will be a sort of block. The valve is blocked. So there is a very tiny heat current flowing in the system. So the wire will be heated up because it cannot evacuate heat. When we open the density of states, it is closed here, for instance, you see some larger heat can flow. And so the, there is more evacuation of heat. And so the temperature in the wire will lower. And this is reflected exactly in this uh, graph here. That is the experimental temperature versus flux for forward and backward. So also the temperature itself shows this experiment is coming into the phase. This is amazing. So you see that when the for integral value of the flux, when the, where the gap is closed, we have the maximum temperature inside because there is small evacuation of heat. When we go nearby uh, same integral flux quantum, here we, we completely make almost or less gap the system. And so there is more possibility for the heat to be located in the system. And here we have these two states in temperature. So the hysteresis, the electrical hysteresis, is completely uh, replaced with that in the thermal hysteresis as well, okay? Here is uh, something similar in the, in the central uh, scheme. We have the electronic temperature measured in the system for different uh, powers, injection power. So changing the injection power in the Y, we change the general level of temperatures, but you see that the general behavior of this butterfly is preserved. So this is not very sensitive in this range of temperature, okay? But what is interesting is that uh, the maximum modulation in temperature that we get, uh, this is delta T, the maximum, the swing in temperature versus power can be very large. It can be, we obtain something like 600 milliK. This is a, it seems small, but it's around 17% of the temperature of operation because we are working, you see, at 800 milliK, so very large average temperature. So it's boiling a lot, the system, okay? And if we compare this uh, 16 milliK with uh, all the advanced interferometry that we use to do some uh, heat experiments, I mean, it is uh, almost two of the magnitude larger in temperature modulation. It is, uh, and it's on par with what we obtain with, uh, um, uh, with uh, the just effects. So how does it compare with the proximity effect? Uh, in, in the older experiment by Trano Secker oh, yes. at the beginning of 2000 or the end of the 90s, I mean, uh, the he obtained something like 0 0.5 mK temperature modulation versus 16, 20 mK. Much smaller, yeah. 
What is the impact of the bath temperature on the system? The bath temperatures, as you know, it has a very important role because it controls the amount of the electron common pressure. Okay, so it's very important. So one can think that the lower the bath temperature, the better it is because there is a weaker coupling between the, the lattice phonons and the structure of the system. Increases the temperature, makes stronger the diffraction, and so the electrons, the quasiparty, will be more linked to the phonons. So with more difficulty, they will swing the temperature. And this is exactly what is going on here. So here we have, we, we test three different bath temperatures. We measure the temperature in the system as a function of the flux for um, fixed power in the system. So you see at lower temperature, we have a very pronounced swing. By increasing the temperature, of course, we increase the average level in temperature, but we reduce both the swing and as well the width of these hysterics. Because increasing the temperature, what is producing? Reduces the mini gap inside the wire. So elongates its critical let's say the coherence length. So the, the junction will be pushed towards the, the shorter regime where the, the skewness is reduced and there's much less, let's say, um, instability in this hysteresis, okay? So by increasing the temperature, we, the bath temperature, we just reduce the swing as expected in the same way we reduce the width of our hysteresis. This is the evolution of uh, the power as a function uh, the temperature is a function of power. And we see what is interesting here on the right, in particular, that this, how does it evolve the swing in temperature? So up to 1K, we can obtain a swing of 2 millikelvin. So it's pretty large, what we're saying. The system is very robust. It can work from a few tenths of millik of one, of one kelvin. So two orders of magnitude of variation in bath temperature. It's just to say how robust is this kind of system here, OK? OK. so. Now, uh, as a very nice slides, I want to show you the implementation, how to use this, uh, this object here as a temperature modulator uh, to implement a thermal memory. So as you are seeing, uh, whenever we have uh, an hysteresis or a sort of hysteresis, it can be used to implement the memory, not two states, at least the classical memory, not the quantum memory, classical memory. So, I mean, if we look at this, uh, at this uh, uh, scheme here, the memory cell operation is just what uh, we got experimentally for the temperature. Now we have our temperature that has an hysteresis. So we can choose, I mean, if we fix uh, some uh, breathing flux in the middle, the orange one, we have two states, one and zero, that corresponds to, to the two different states that we can access in forward and backward direction. And the two states zero one, as we are saying, are characterized by a different topological index. Okay, and because because this is this, uh, let's say it's discriminated by the parity of the winding number of the phase along the wire. These are completely topologically protected. This is the point that uh, uh, is uh, very interesting because it's two states. So you cannot uh, go from one to the other unless you overcome or you tunnel through the phase divide. It's enormous. It's zero point one electron. 100 milli electron volts, so it's huge. Later, I, give, I will give you some numbers that tells you what is the, um, let's say, the probability of tunneling this part, okay? So basically, you understand already what I'm saying, that uh, if we state in one, for instance, uh, we can give a, an impulse in the magnetic field, so that we go here, we go zero. And if we are zero, we go an impulse in flux, and we go one, so this is the, the writing and the erasing operation of, uh, of the system, okay? And this is what we use to do this. And this is shown here in, in, in the central panel. So in the top panel, we have uh, the response of uh, the temperature, the two states, zero, one, corresponding to this and this. And then below is uh, the trace that we use uh, for the magnetic flux to, to change the state. So we give an impulse, and we go here, a negative impulse, and we go there a positive impulse, and then we move, uh, we, we, write, we write and we erase uh, our memory. And the difference between these two guys here is basically, is very small. I will show you later. It's of the order of few milli-k. So we are able to, to read a few milli-k difference in two states of memory, okay? Then a memory has to be, uh, has to show stability against path fluctuations. So what, what we did, 
to show that it's robust and to add some noise on top of this uh, state. Okay, so here we add the noise that is a, a significant fraction of uh, the without flux. And you see, so we give a, on, we, we put some noise on the flux and we, we see that the, the two states are still very well separated. So this shows a very nice stability against flux fluctuations. Then the very nice properties of a metal would be the non-volatility. So what does it mean, non-volatility? Non-volatility means that, that when you depower the system, the system keeps the memory. And when you repower the system, you can treat the same state. And this is non-volatility. So in this case, what we do is, uh, is that we depower the, uh, the heating in the system. And then we heat again, and we just uh, go to read again the state. So here is just a cycle that we do to our heaters in the island. And below is, uh, is the cycle that we go to the flux to make a readout in one state one on the state zero, okay? And you see when, is, when the red one is on, means that we are heating the system. When it's off, we disconnect the heating. And so this is nice because, uh, and this is the response of the system and here is enlarged. So this means that we can, whenever we want to read the state, the state is blocked by fluxoid quantization and is protected the state. So it can remain for years there, okay? We just heat up the system, we read the system it's here, zero. Then we disconnect heating and we don't read anything because then, then we, again, we energize in another step and we read. Then we give some flux and we change the state, we go in one and so forth so on. It's just to, look, this is made in, in 60 seconds, several measurements and the, and the state is perfect here and here, okay? And the difference between these two, delta T is formal decay. We have tried this, uh, the electrical counterpart of the memory was operated for four days, uh, sampling every four hours, this kind of system. So it's perfect. Thanks to this topological protection and the quantization of the flux in the system, you can maintain the two states, I mean, for all the time you want. So this shows how powerful is uh, topological protection uh, ensured by <laughs> the flux toy quantization. By the way, here we have, I mean, the memory is able to provide two logical states encoded by the temperature where the difference in temperature is four millikelvin. And we can exactly, see, read the two millikelvin states. Anyway, so can you comment on the speed of this memory? Very nice question. The speed, uh, so there are two parameters for the speed, or at least two, two figures of memory. One is a, is the speed related to the uh, writing and erasing. Uh, and then there's the one for the readout. So for the readout uh, can be pretty fast because this is thermometry. And this, I mean, uh, putting this in a superconducting resonator can be pushed uh, up to a few years, I would say. The uh, writing and uh, erasing is more slower, I would say, because this implies thermal relaxation in the system. So if we are at very low temperatures, this can be of the order of, uh, let's say, tens of microseconds. When we operate at this temperature of several hundred mm decay, probably we can approach the years from there. So I mean, uh, it, it depends a lot on where we, we want to, to work. I mean, these are just guesses based on the relaxation time of the system. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't know exactly because all this was made in a quasi-static configuration. Okay, so um, I wish to conclude telling you that we, we have, I have shown the demonstration of a tuning of the thermal properties of international size superconductors, okay? So uh, based on proximity effect. And we have shown a sizable temperature modulation in the operation up to 1K. Uh, and we have shown the realization of the first tunable thermal memory where the logic state is encoded by the temperature. Okay, so this uh, memory uh, has shown robustness against flux fluctuation and volatility, which is uh, everything is, uh, is, uh, is related to the existing of this uh, phase slit within the jetty. Okay, uh, this kind of system, so both uh, in the case of thermal bulb and in uh, uh, and for the uh, memory, could be relevant in a number of possible application technological application, spanning from, for instance, cardiac electronics, energy harvesting. Some specific logical architectures like thermal notifications, 
uh, non-volatile data storage units, and in general, also detention center electricity. So with this, I wish to thank you for, for your attention, and uh, it was really a pleasure for me to show our